extremely passionate about you know, leadership, about passion of people, and about seeing employees do well. And I guess in the Philippines, I'd like to think, you know, over the years, I've probably hired tens of thousands of people. And, you know, I really believe that, you know, ma management of HR in the Philippines specifically still has a long way to go. Okay, so there's a lot of things we can do. Internationally, the good news is, you see this term, CHRO. This is relatively new. Because remember in the old days, it was VPHR, HR director. In other words, they weren't in the C-suite. Right? So at the boardroom, you didn't invite the HR guy or girl until you were ready to downsize and cut a bunch of people. Then you called the HR people and said, we need to cut people, we need to do this. So the good news is HR has a C decided now. So one of the things at Synchrony, which is the new company that I've just started up in the last months, which is actually kind of a continuation of Arinzo, Northgate Arinzo, Shore Solutions, and now Synchrony, uh, and a lot of familiar faces, as, as Richard mentioned, keep following along, is all about aligning the business. And, and one of the great things I, I can share with you is that with the right tools and the right culture and the right mindset, you can actually have HR drive your business. And, and, and I'll try to show a little bit of real case. Um, and of course, it's different with startups, smaller companies, small, medium, but right up to the multinationals. Because at the end of the day, we all say, and I, if I look on every website, people are our most important asset. We want to be the employer of choice. However, I don't see them investing in the tools and platforms and people the same way they do raw materials, production planning, supply chain management. Right? So this is, again, I'd like to share with you some of the ways that you can drive you know, numbers. I'm an accountant, so when everybody asks me to spend anything, I want to know what is my return on that money. HR people have been really weak at this. So let me talk a little bit about aligning the business with HR. And I guess I'm the guy who has to do this. Okay, so I guess the opportunity is there. And, and I see it more and more in terms of, you know, at Synchrony, we're involved with, you know, setting up shared service centers. We're putting in platforms like Success Factors. We're providing payroll solutions for, for customers. And one of you see is that the CRHO, again, you need to step forward here. And you have to be able to show that you are an influencer in the senior leadership teams and in the board levels. Okay, if you're not invited to the board meetings, you're probably not influencing. Why are you not influencing? It's because you don't have the analytics, the numbers, and the business case, and the alignment of the top strategic objectives to what your programs are going to do to make a difference to the organization. The, the, the operational side, and this is not a new trend, everybody takes the transactional stuff, right? You look at uh, outsourcing that to, to Tata or Wipro or or, or Synchrony or NGA. So again, that move is happening in HR, but have the HR people still stepped up and moved into that strategic role and where you're actually looking at how you drive business results. And that's again something, as HR professionals, you gotta get that in your head. Don't go to the CEO with some half-baked, we're gonna have a bowling competition. It, it's good to have bowling and team building, I'm, I'm not against that, as long as it doesn't cost me a lot. I'm cool with it. But the bottom line is where are your programs? Because bowling is employee engagement. And employee engagement is very important. How do you actually turn that and make this into some sort of tangible benefit when you ask me to spend that money? Um, HR does impact cultural identity and cultural, and what I like to call passion. Okay, and I guess I'd like to think as a leader, very passionate, I'll go clean the toilets and I might also go raise one million dollars to run the company. And I think this is all again, how do you create that from not just your leadership team, but how do you move that all the way down the organization? And that's all about, you know, visibility of strategy, visibility of targets, accountability of meeting those targets and rewarding the people for meeting them with some sort of tangible way to actually monitor that. Okay, so cultural change is definitely something that HR professionals should be able to stand at the table and drive. They should have a pulse of the, of the organization. <laughs> okay. 
Again, the key areas that I come into when I come into an organization is all around the senior leadership team, and people like Bjorn and others specialize in this. But again, the, the ability of that senior leadership team to, to, to be able to create that culture is absolutely important. The high potentials. Who are your high potentials? Who are the next leaders? Who are the next people that cascade that information down to the lowest levels? Shore Solutions was a contact center. We had about 2,000 seats. And again, we did a number of M&As as I went through that investment process. I mean, how do you get those agents that are taking calls from Comcast in America to feel the passion and what you're trying to do as an organization? And I know for everybody here, we're, we're people driven here. The Philippines is very famous for people and good resources. So again, how do we get those people understanding the passion and the drive that we want to we wanna put forward? The HRD being a strategic, and I, I mentioned it already, it's all about numbers. And I hate to put it that way, but at the end of the day, as a chairman of a board or a CEO, I need to see the numbers. And again, there's no reason why you can't, as an HR professional, provide those numbers and provide the analytics. And you know, we'll talk a little bit, uh, Gord Zelstra from SAP will come up later about success factors. Now we're a success factors partner because I you know, had been doing SAP for, for many, many years and, and I hope I won't offend Gord, but I got tired of the old on-premise model because the business case was getting harder and harder to meet. People complained about the same things for 20 years, no matter how many implementations I did. This cloud solutions and the, you know, some of the tools that you have at your fingertips now are amazing. Okay, and I, I guess Shore was one of the ones where we went from 200 to 2,000 people. Uh, we, uh, we had a, a robust spaghetti group of systems and they were all Excel. Okay, because when you, you start small, you don't need all these fancy systems. I don't, I'm not spending money on that. By the time we were done, our entire, our entire company, the intranet, the financial analytics, the customer services relationship side was all running on success factors. And that's the only system I needed because I could plug in the pieces into that and show the analytics around it. Okay? So, you know, again, HR people typically do need to understand millennials, you know, the, the, the new ways, the new tactics, social media. And you, I think we'll hear about some great stuff today on different ways in terms of managing people, culture, and how do we get productivity. And, and, you know, and I think everybody's seen it. Millennials are not really different, right? What they're interested in is not that different. What they do have is a, a attention disorder. So all they need to do is you need to be able to engage them differently. But once they are engaged, they, they, they really you know, have many of the same traits that Unfortunately, I just came in at the baby boomer. I'm not even an X or a Y or anything else. But again, very exciting. And having managed a large call center, this is a whole different world as well. Huh? This is a bunch of crazy college kids, basically. You, you got a frat house going on, and you're managing this uh, on behalf of your, your, your clients. So again, just a couple of things you've, I've mentioned before, aligning the business with people. Because right? everything that's happening is still driven by the people right from the receptionist to the chairman, okay? And how do you get those people all on the same page? Again, in terms of the CHRO and, and you know, what is the career path for, you know, how many times do you hear of an HR professional becoming the CEO or board? Not as high as the CFO, the COO, the CIOs. And when you look at things, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate because it's really a CEO should be a blend of, you know, technical operational skills, but boy, you would like to think the most successful CEOs have a personality and have a way of dealing with people and, and motivating people and having those skills around the people side, the culture, the passion of driving organizations. The most successful ones are typically led by those charismatic, passionate leaders. Okay, so again, you look at all the studies and, and I, see, you know, I, I really do believe the new generation of HR people, and I don't want to offend anybody my age and older, that the old generation were not as valid in, in, in the boardroom. But again, HR professionals have the opportunity to step up and I think, you know, again, put the business case forward. This is another study, again, on Harvard's Business Review. And I, you know, this is a slide that I was, was horribly surprised and shocked. Now, my first question was, 
which companies did they talk to? Because here you've got, you know, the CHRO and the CEOs, and you look at some different, you know, some different parameters here, leadership styles, and in terms of where these roles fit in. And, you know, I, I would, this is really a lot of the blue chip, multinational, shall we say, first world uh, countries. But you do see that the CHRO, you know, does have a lot of, of the skills and a lot of the opportunity to move into those senior positions. So I, I think uh, CEOs and, and, and CHROs were pretty much at the top of the, the pyramids. Now again, you're looking at emotional competencies, thinking styles, and leadership styles, but this is from that softer side of a CEO. So again, I think some interesting dynamics that, you know, the skills are there. Now they need to stop talking about bowling tournaments. Okay? Need to veer away from the tactical application of just pure policy and programs. Okay? Because again, that's all stuff that, you know, once it's up and running, it's an annual review, you push through things. But it's again, how can you be nimble and flexible and be driving business results when after one month you see you have an attrition issue? Right? So the call center is a perfect example where if I have an attendance issue or an attrition issue, I have a billing issue. Because if those people didn't show up that day, I can't replace the next day that revenue. It's gone. Okay? So how can I get tools and, 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 and platforms that will actually show me on a particular program that I have an issue. Because quite often, you know what, if you have attendance and attrition issues, it's all about the fact that you probably have a management issue on that particular account. Okay? So this is some of the ideas that, you know, that's tactical, but it's, it's being able to on, you know, not monthly reviews, this is daily and weekly opportunity to use HR data to feed revenue, to feed business results. Okay, the HR strategy, and uh, this is something that, you know, Andrew Leonard is, who runs our shop here in the Philippines. Uh, one of the great things we did at Shore was we set up all, you know, the strategic goals in a performance management system. Again, we use success factors. The ability to take that, and I was able to cascade that to each and every one of my direct reports, their reports, right down to the contact center agents. And it was absolutely an epiphany for everybody as to mm -hmm. understanding why are we doing things? What is the drive? And how do I contribute to the bottom line? And it's again, visibility. You can't make people accountable if they don't even understand and if it's not visible what they're driving towards. Okay, so again, HR can do this. Okay, because in the past it used to be you waited for the CFO to come in and give you that horribly depressing, boring update. Where they whined about, you know, you didn't make your numbers here, your forecasts are off here. Well, why are the forecasts off and how do we get in front of that and how do we take actions on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Okay, understanding challenges, business needs of the front end, which is again something that HR professionals typically do, but again, CEOs don't listen. You know, your, 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 your team leads are very unhappy because you don't have a, you know, a proper washroom facility. You don't have a good pantry. The food is too expensive for the staff. You know, again, if the HR person has the ear of the right people, they can do something about it, or I can tell them, tell them to stop whining and let's move on. We can't afford better food, we can't afford this and that. Okay, so it's again, some areas that we can really have HR professionals come in and be able to analyze the current state and put plans together to drive business results, which unfortunately for most of us is profit. So again, enabling the transformation, and again, you know, whether, and, and this works for, for small startups, it works for small medium. This is not that you have to be Shell or Exxon Mobil to make these things happen. And again, I, you know, have done a number of startups. I, I, I've run the big multinationals, and you know what? The beauty of some of this cloud stuff nowadays is you can actually turn it on for a very, very low entry price. In the old days, if you had to buy these big systems, you, you just couldn't afford it. Uh, there's no opportunity. Now you can get world-class solutions at a, you know, say $1 per employee per month. That's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. You can actually make this an operational type of a cost. Okay, so we've done a lot of this stuff, right? We, we have the global guys. Compliance is a big issue. HR needs to be able to 
Also be very involved with compliance, right? So training, have people been certified? Do you have employee records that actually reflect that if something bad happens, did you do your very best to ensure that that bad thing didn't happen? Because if you didn't, they might throw me as the owner in jail, especially if you're in Australia, the United States, because they actually take this really seriously over there, that you need to have been able to at least attempt compliance, because compliance is not totally defined, right? But if somebody gets personal data, and HR is personal data, there's, there, there's a real big issue. One of the interesting dynamics about cloud is, again, this thought that, well, you know, what's the security? What's the firewall look? I don't like my data residing outside my, my walls. Well, a lot of companies I went to, their, their HR data was sitting in a PC under some dude's desk, you know, versus, say, looking at a cloud solution and, you know, whether it's, and, and again, the vendors don't matter, but if, I'm pretty sure SAP has more firewalls, more protection of that data than your IT dude does in the office, right? So it's, again, another thing is this, this whole cloud culture and what does cloud mean? Okay, so again, lots of opportunity there. The transform HR service delivery, more strategy, less transactional. You know, everybody in this room is probably very familiar with this. This is now 20 years we've all been working on this stuff. And certainly the NGAs and, and Tata and, and others, this is where they do that back office stuff for you, right? It's transactional. Enable and engage the workforce. And this is where, again, we need to move to. You know, we need to get the right CHROs. But at the end of the day, you need to have the tools and platforms to be able to drive that information. Because if you don't have the numbers, nobody's going to listen to you. The CFO will blow you off. The CEO doesn't have time for you. And of course, the CIO, in most cases, doesn't like cloud. because He's worried about his job, right? Because the CIO has to have 300 people running his environments. And when I put in cloud, I need 10. But again, this is where HR guys need to be able to step up into that boardroom and talk sometimes without the CIO's ear. Not that I would bypass those guys because they cut my email access and I can't get in suddenly. Okay, so again, when you look at it from, you know, sort of a more wordy view, but again, the critical focus areas, and you know, this is something that I work very hard on with my customers. And with Synchrony, we're very, very proud that we're working with some of the biggest customers in the region. We're working on Woolworths in Australia, one of the largest success factor implementations in the world. And again, just a phenomenal undertaking. And, and, and everybody who knows retail, Whew, retail are one of the toughest customers anywhere because every percentage of a, of, of a point, they, they consider that you've taken all their children away and things. Okay? They don't like to spend money on these kind of things. We're working at Singtel. We're working at BHP Billiton. We're working with the Oboitis group here in the Philippines. You know, and we're working with Shore as well still. So again, very, very exciting as we move this forward. And, you know, Andrew will show you some of those tools that we use. But at the end of the day, the executive team is ultimately important. That is really the front. That is what the people see. That is what they believe in. And as Richard said, I am very proud that over the last 15 years in the Philippines, everybody laughs because every company I start, every company I move to, there seems to be this team behind me. And they look, they look older as we go along. But it's 15 years. And my, my CFO has been with me since she was 21 years old and a graduate. And she's still now my group CFO. And this is in this market for new people to the Philippines. This is an opportunity to meet some great people here today and help you get to know those people and connect the dots. This is a great forum to connect you to people. And I think you'll find we're not too belligerent about our competitive natures because all of us, you know, sometimes we compete, sometimes we partner, you know, sometimes we drink beer. Okay, so again, you'll find most of the people here are all about being very passionate about what they do and passionate about where we live. And I've made this my home and, and, and very much are passionate about things. Talent development, again, aligning talent to where you're going to and how is that going to work? And again, you can use tools to actually show you that visibly. If it's not visible, it's really hard. You can sit in your senior leadership team, have a great strategy, nobody else understands what you're doing. Okay, so it's moving it and, and developing talent, culture and employee experience, creating the passion. 
I'm always very excited. My people never ask me for overtime to get paid. It's just part of the job. You know, and if we're not so busy, then, then, then get lost. Go, go somewhere else. You're taking a seat and you're breathing the air. Okay? If that's all you're doing, then you, you, you go home for the day. Work from home. And I, you know, as an entrepreneur, small business, I can afford to do that. Not everybody can, can do that approach. But if, you're, if your customers are passionate right from the call center guy answering the phone, they will represent you much better okay? if they feel that passion. Leadership and visibility of the strategy. Don't think that those people, shall I say, at the bottom of the, 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 the org charts, they're not as, 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 as menial and, and, and stupid as sometimes people think. They really do want to understand how they impact the success of the company. Let them see what they, you know, obviously what is relevant and appropriate to see. Well building and resilience and, you know, again, this is a country where, you know, things like night shifts, it's a horrible, it's a horrible lifestyle actually. You know, I, I had night shifts and I would go in and have dinner with the team at 1 a.m. You know, that's their supper time and, and, you know, again, how do we keep driving that you know, healthy workplace. And there are ways to do it and, and you know, there are, I think, some things that we all need to do, particularly in that night shift world. Performance and accountability, you know, again, you can't make people accountable if they don't understand what they're accountable for. And I'm really big on this. If they don't meet it, then I do make people accountable. So I, I can be a very nice guy, but accountability is very important for me. And I think for all HR people, you can be the one presenting the dynamics of what is that accountability? What are those numbers? That's not for the finance team to necessarily always put in your plate. Uh, you know, I, and, and again, I'm not gonna go through a lot of detail here because I, I can spend a, a half a day, a day on this, and I think everybody, uh, there's a lot of really intelligent you know, speakers here. I, I, I see I'm just really impressed, but you know, again, the good news is I think we all have the same slides. They just have different colors on them, right? Pretty much. You know, the desperate systems, processes, talent. You know, again, you can go across the world and relatively similar, you know, challenges for, for, for organizations and for HR. The biggest one in the Philippines is, of course, I, I believe, is all the recruiting around the BPO call center world. You know, it, it's, it's 1.3 this year, 1.6 next year. How do we keep you know, this talent pool going, because if you don't fill it, uh, it, it'll go somewhere else. And you know, it's coming up in India, it's coming up, well, India had the voice. I think we've taken the voice a little bit as number one. But again, you've got Vietnam, you've got China, you've got other, you know, other uh, Eastern Europe trying to come in and take that, that business away. So, you know, again, we need to move into models where you have the strategic focus and one of the ones here that I'm working with a, a number of BPOs is around recruiting. How can you have better recruiting than all the other ones that are kind of doing the same thing? We all pay everybody relatively the same. You get a few distracting, irritating ones that pay a bit more. We call those the captive centers. Is there anybody from captive centers here? Because as outsourcers, we don't have that margin. Uh, there's one right there. <laughs> They don't have to give the outsourcing company the margin, right? Uh, so they, 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 they pay them more and it, it knocks the balance of being able to be profitable in, in, in the business. But it's again, breaking down your st strategy, your self-service, your shared service, your core business functions, your partner, your HR is a partner, your HR is a strategic move. Get this right and you can move to that. Okay, I guess uh, just a a quick thing on synchrony and, and, and who the hell am I to be up here talking about anything in terms of an expert, but again, I, I started in 2001 in, in uh, Singapore, but I actually really lived here, uh, but we didn't have an operation uh, in, in, in here. Created the whole offshoring mindset, and I can assure you back in 2001, nobody thought you should offshore HR. And it's something that, uh, you know, at one point with NGA, we had about 2,000 people throughout the region. Very, very proud of that. And a number of the people in this room worked for me in that, that time and worked with some great customers. You know, working with executives from Shell and, and, and you know, Shell people programs were really mind blowing. They were really impressive. And during the good days of oil and gas, they have really impressive amounts of money they need to spend. Because sometimes they're embarrassed they're making too much profit. And then it turns around now and they're complaining they don't make any profit. 
2012, I joined Shore as a, an investor, and uh, you know that went really well. And again, very proud of what we did at Shore. 200, I call it the 200 to 2002 years. And I, you know, I, I had the strategy was three years, so I, I actually got in a little bit earlier. But again, M&A was a big part of that. We bought a company called Rainmaker. I don't know if anybody remembers the, the banners around. Pretty funky company. Uh, and when we bought that again, can you imagine, I, I think we had 500 people, Rainmaker were 1,000 people. How do you integrate those things? How do you make that happen? How do you create the identity? It, uh, you know, again, HR needs to drive that. They are really the partner to drive that mindset of, you know, we're sure, and you're a rainmaker, how do you, how do you bring this together? Okay, 2014, I, I must admit, I, I was a little bit off the SAP chain, done it for 25 years, felt a little bit tired of the whole, you know, going through that, that cycle until they came out with success factors and suddenly I got very excited again. Because here was a pragmatic platform, cloud, whatever you want to call it, that you can use for a 10 employee company right up to a 100,000 employee company. And you can turn it on relatively inexpensively. So I got really excited about it again, thinking, isn't this great that we can actually you know, we have a platform from the HR side that can drive all, the, all your analytics. At Shore, I had by day what my attendance was the night before. So that I, and I had a dashboard on my landing page coming out saying, hey, Comcast is not, you know, half the people didn't show up last night. You know, so that these kind of parameters was coming out of an HR system and out of a, a, you know, an analytics. And, and Gord and others will talk about analytics, big data, it's about getting the right information at the right time to the right people. Get employees engaged, managers engaged, the right decision makers engaged. So we're now uh, rolling out Synchrony in Singapore, in Australia, and here. My delivery center's here. So again, for you big boys from Tata and stuff, if you ever need any success factors people, please give us a call. We, we will we'll never be as big as Tata, I promise. So we do work with a lot of the major players in terms of transforming these, 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 these areas. The other thing, of course, I have to do just quickly is I also own a resort in the Philippines. So please come visit Kahuna Resort and Spa. So you can see I cover all the, all the, <laughs> all, all the up and coming industries in the Philippines I like to be involved with because I'd like to think I can make money in them. So again, it's in the north, it's a surfing beach. It's very nice, we're gonna give a gift certificate away later. So. Uh, Sorry, that was my quick uh, plug. Okay. Again, you know, I, I'm just very big about the people I surround myself with because I really, I, I, you know, it's not that I don't have to work, but I just want to work with people I like working with and partners I like working with and, and, and other owners that I like working with. So, you know, this is again my team from the Philippines here. I put them up against anybody in the world. And that's why we're working at Woolworths and Singtel. They're not going there as offshore Philippine workers, OFWs. They're going there as the best kick-ass consultants in the area that they are involved with. 